Welcome to Milestones for your Kindle Improvement. And this is the starting point. Now, uh, before you jump into a lot of uh, details, this is the basics of basic of the basic foundation. So I want you to pay really attention to this. Now, uh, Kindle Basics, we call basics and then uh, if you hear, when you hear Kindle Basics, probably you think about Kindle Movements, but it includes etiquettes and manners. Reho, we call it Reho. Okay, and appearance, Chakso, okay, how you look. Uh, Keikogi and Hakama, and when you put Bogu on. Remember, uh, this is based on Dan criteria. So if you're going for Shodan to Sandan, uh, Shodan Nidan Sandan, you really have to be uh, aware of this. Now, EQ level, you know, uh, everyone is very nice to you, basically, uh, because your EQ level, uh, your appearance is not so good, but you're going to pass. Now, your down level, we, uh, if we don't have belt, but it's a black belt, right? In, like, if you have a belt. Shodan is a starting point of black belt, so you have to make sure that you ha look very good. Okay, and then Kindle movements. Now, remember, this is this is not only to pass exams. Okay, we want to improve our Kindle, and you should know what you need to do in order for you to improve Kindle so you can pass exam. You improve your Kindle and then you pass exam. Okay, not the other way around. So if you know what to do, what you have to work on in daily Kindle training, you should be on the right track, right? So this is for that. And I want you, I want to help you and I want you to pre, what do you call it? I want you to, uh, want to learn as well as want to improve, okay? Now, what's Kindle movement? So make sure you do etiquette. If you don't know, etiquette and, uh, etiquette and manners at the dojo and in Kindle general, please go to uh, kindleguide.com or you can purchase Kindle Guide for beginners. Or you can also consult with your teacher. This is a very, uh, this is the best way talk to your teacher, talk to your senpai, okay? If you have questions, you can also ask me. Now, let's talk about Kindle movements. Now, the flow of Kindle movements, all right, you have to have a good kamae, right? And you have to know what ma means. And also, uh, following the ma, you have datotsu, strike, striking, and stabbing if you're allowed to uh, stab or thrust. Okay, and then followed by zanshin. This is the flow of your kendo movements, right? Okay, and then of course you have to go back to kamae, so it never ends. Zanshin is the end of your movement, but it's not the end of the flow. Flow won't stop, okay? So that is very important thing you should know. Now, what kama, What is kamae? Okay, kamae consists of posha, okay, feet positions, hand positions, grip. We call it tenochi, but I just I wrote it grip. Shinai height, right? And kiai. We can say shinai position, but uh, shinai height. And also kiai. Now, every single this, posture, also posture consists of uh, your head, shoulder position, head position, your hip position, your feet position, right? So, you have to have good posture first, and you have to know where your feet should be, right? Where your hands should be. Hands, both hands. If your uh, left hand is too low, it's not good. Too high, it's not good. Right hand too. Right, so we just say kamae, but kamae you have to pay attention to your head position, shoulder position, feet position, hand position, grip, tenochi, how you grab your sword. 
Is your left hand okay? Right hand okay? Are you grabbing your sword like a karate fist? Or are you grabbing your uh, sword properly? Okay? This, these things, little things count. If you don't do this right at early stage of your kendo life, you're gonna struggle. Okay? So, uh, make sure you do everything right. I know, it, <clears throat> I know it's very hard to do. Okay? But at least you, you know, shape of your grip have to be a lot of, uh, has to do with a lot of things in kendo. Okay? Otherwise, if you just know uh, shape of your fist, your kendo will be sweet. If you do the wrong fist, you're gonna have a hard time. So little things count as up, okay? So make sure you everything is okay. So next one, what is ma? Ma is, maybe you are familiar with ma ai, ma ai, okay? So uh, ma ai is a distance, uchima is very important, okay? It's your striking distance, okay? So it's a physical distance, it is down here. Now ma also means timing. Okay, so in, in Japanese, when we talk about ma, ma or mai, we also talk about timing as well. Ma, not many people uh, use ma anymore in kendo because it's kind of old-fashioned way to say things. But if you talk to traditional or older senses, they go ma is wrong. So it could be distance or timing. Okay, so now nowadays when you hear mai, which is pretty much distance, all right? So you don't get confused in that way. But please remember, ma is also means timing and distance. Now, up to sandan level, you need to know this. Uchima, your striking distance, all right? And the timing is important. So up to sandan, shodan nidan level, you're still learning timing, all right? Sandan, you've got to know that. When to strike, okay, when to strike, it's very important. That timing includes uh, uh, here datotsu as well, but uh, you know ma is also also timing when to execute. So it's execute datotsu. Okay, seme and tame is fourth dan, fifth dan. Tame is also fifth, uh, sixth dan. Seme you're gonna apply that in your fourth dan and fifth dan, but tame is from sixth dan. If I have to categorize it. Okay, so don't worry about tame and seme at this very stage. Okay, now, so datotsu, okay, striking and thrusting. Now, datotsu consists of fumikomi, right? You are familiar with the term. I don't want to use the English term for it, but it's stomping. Uh, fumikomi or fumi and fumikiri. That is the kicking leg. Okay, you have to kick the floor, right? So we have fumikomi and fumikiri. And also hikitsuke. Okay, what is hikitsuke? You have to snap up your back foot right after you uh, you land your front foot on the floor. All right? So that is kind of part of kiken taichi. Okay, everything has to be... We cannot do fumikomi and hikitsuke at the same time, of course. It's a different legs, different feet, all right? So fumikomi first and immediately the back foot should follow, okay? Follow means back foot should go forward, okay? You don't want to leave your back foot behind, okay? It's not realistic, is it? When you run, your back foot always follows, same principle. Now, uh, shinai control. If you cannot control your shinai, we cannot control, uh, you cannot give effective and effective strike okay shinai control includes the direction of the sword okay so of course how you strike as well big and small so you have to uh, maneuver your shinai very well so shodan level it's okay you're starting doing that all right nidan level you should be better than shodan sandan level you need to have com uh, complete control over your shinai because fourth then you have to do kaishuaza as well, all right? So make sure you have good control shinai. You have to practice that. Now, tenouchi, yeah, grip. 
right? Tenouji is more than grip. You have to have sharp, uh, ten, uh, sharp strike. In order for you to create sharp strike, you need tenouji. All right, don't worry about it too much at the very this moment. I'm just explaining what you need to know and what you need to perform. Of course, datosu go with ki. Right, that's so ki is internal energy, and ken shinai control, and tai is shinai uh, ken is shinai control and tenouji, and tai is fumikomi, fumikiri, hikitsuke. These three things. All right. And of course, followed by Zanshin. Now, Zanshin is focus. You stay focused. You have to be aware that you have an opponent. Okay? And you have to use Suriyashi. Suriyashi is sliding. Okay? And sliding, but you can do Okuriyashi or Ayumiyashi. If you're, done, if, you're not, uh, if you're not familiar with the terms at your know, Sandan level, it's a problem. So you go over. The basics again okay just terms okay gotta remember terms okay and Zanshin is also means readiness you have to prepare because you have your opponent right you have to prepare for attacking or uh, defending okay and ling lingering Kiai Kiai has to follow right men is too short when you put men on you gotta man and Zanshin, all right. So that is an important part of Kindle movements. And go back to Kamaya, right? Now, uh, go back to Zanshin can be with or without Kamaya, all right. But after you take Zanshin, you still continue fighting, right? So you have to go back to your Kamaya. Clear, all right. Now, uh I want you to keep looking at this uh, diagram. Okay, I'm going to talk about posha. Okay, posha is very important in kendo. All right, and posha that's the foundation of your kendo. Okay, if your posha is bad, uh, how can you keep the posha uh, before, during, after your strikes? All right, so if you bat, if you have a bad posture before, your posture will be bad during your strike, and your posture is still bad after your strike. So it's very important to have a good posture. Now, posture is related to your kiai too. All right, if you have a bad posture, of course you can't really have a good kiai. That's because it's related to your lungs. You, we have to have. Uh, we have to do the diaphragm uh, breathing. I'm going to explain later uh, about Kiai. So now, what's the good posture? Now, ear and shoulder, okay, the position. Ear should be above your shoulder, and shoulder should be above your hip, and your hip should be above your knee, and knee should be above your ankle. That it has to be st straight line. Okay, so that is, doesn't matter male or female, that is a good posture. Now, your, the back of your head, uh, this is not the back of your head, so don't worry about too much. Your shoulder and your butt should be on the same line. And if you lean backwards against the wall, right, and then check if your shoulder and hip are on the, uh, can be uh, on, touching on the wall. Okay, that's uh, one way to check your uh, posture. Okay, and of course you can have someone to check your posture as well. Now, I, I really suggest you should see a doctor or a chiropractor who knows about the posture. Okay, so you they can tell you, oh, your posture should be like this, and then you have to remember that. Take a photo or something, right? And it, you have to be serious about this because uh, you invest your time and of course money uh, to improve yourself. So, and the posture is the foundation of kendo at the same time as you. Okay, so make sure you have a good posture every time, I mean, in the daily life as well, right? So, this is, uh, I have this uh, what, illustration uh, for male and female 
And why I had uh, I had male and female? I wanted to show the center of gravity. Uh, now it is said that uh, you, the for male center of gravity is about fifty six percent of your of your height from the feet. Okay, and for ladies fifty five percent. Now of course it's average. It, it it might be different for you, but this is a starting point. So you know your height and measure whereabouts your uh, center of gravity. Now, why is it so important? We talk about uh, seika tanden in uh, uh, Eastern culture, uh, uh, Asian culture. What's seika, seika tanden? We believe it is a theory that this energy, internal energy, is coming from there, which is, it, which is about three centimeters or three or four fingers down from your belly button and I found out recently that it's about center of gravity okay it's the same position about the same position around the center of gravity so it's good to know where the center of gravity is now when you have ki right when you have breathing issue okay now ki is important why because uh, a lot of reasons and we shout okay to to uh, remove our fear okay well, we say a lot of we have a lot of uh, a lot of people say we're gonna give our opponent fear but at a certain point uh it won't work now quality uh it's important well, you feel fear because it's not allowed because the quality right uh, but first is first you have to be loud okay so you uh, forget about everything, just focus on uh, key eyes so you don't have to get worry about your opponent hitting you. Your focus, your focus level increased by key eye. Now, how do you do key eye? You have to do, you have to have diaphragmatic breathing. Okay, so not from the chest. You have to breathe in through your nose and then push your air down to the stomach where center of gravity so seika tandem is so that's why it's a good idea to know where the center of gravity gravity is when you stand up so that's that's w around the seika tandem so imagine when you through when you breathe in okay and your stomach will expand not the chest stomach will expand around stomach even back of your uh the uh back of your stomach which is the back lower back that will expand okay and imagine you have the uh, air focused on the center of, around the center of gravity okay hold it like few seconds breathe out through your mouth about 10 to 15 seconds now that is how you have ki go yeah right okay so i suggest uh, for beginners or shodan sandan level or higher still uh, nice and long kiai now yeah yeah like that yeah squeeze your stomach okay and then breathe in quickly that way you will you are training your lower abs as well so you you are training the core muscles all right so nothing bad will happen to practice diaphragmatic breathing through kendo now uh, remember this is the foundation of uh, basics of kendo so go over it okay now i'm going to write it down what i said here so you can go over it all right now remember uh this if you haven't be if you didn't know most of this uh starting point Okay, do it right after this. Okay, next training. It's very important for you to do everything correctly so you can just go, I, I can do this, I can do this. You can cross out this list that for you uh, to accomplish your goal. All right, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next lecture. I would like to send special thanks to patrons for their constant support through patreons.com slash kindle for life.